one game. An NBA Finals seventh game. One game, the difference between basketball immortality and crushing disappointment. One game, a chance to become a legend, a hero, a champion. What motivates me now more than ever is winning another championship. It's going to take heart. It's going to take an uncanny amount of energy and strength. To win a championship was one of the most emotional times of my life because that's what I play for. One game, a chance for a legacy to grow. One final game, a season-long journey draws to a close. Top of the world! Top of the world! Hello, and welcome back to the Over and Back Classic NBA Podcast at HarvardProxism.com. I am Jason Mann, and with me as always is Rich Krejci. Rich, glad to be with you. Absolutely. We uh, we finally, the end of our journey of, of, you know, breaking down these game sevens and we've come like the NBA season to the final point, the NBA finals. And this is uh, it's going to be a monster kind of series of shows we're going to do here. And I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it, though. A lot of a lot of research, a lot of work put in. And, and it's just good information, too. I mean, what's better than a NBA finals game seven? Like, come on. Yeah. So, so we're going to do uh, something a little different. We're going to do some um, bite sized um looks at uh the uh game sevens of the nba finals all 18 of them we're going to do a eight part series uh breaking down two or three each so so um yeah we think it'll be interesting it'll be kind of uh it'll be neat to look at uh there's obviously a wide variety of uh of games although many of them involve the lakers and the celtics so we're talking about unfortunately but but (laughs) that's okay but that's gonna happen so it's like if we did a baseball, but we talk about the Yankees probably like 70% of the time. It's just, you can't, there's nothing you can do, nothing right? Nothing you can do, no. So, uh, you blame the Hawks for trading Bill Russell, I guess. So. Right, yeah, it's all their fault, really. Yeah. It's really the St. Louis Hawks' fault. It really is, exactly. So, uh, yeah, so um, so we'll be getting into that soon. But, of course, you can uh, check us out on uh, Facebook at uh, Over and Back NBA, on Twitter at Over and Back NBA as well. Um you can uh, find uh, the Hardwood Paroxysm I- iTunes feed um, with all the uh, with us and all the other great uh, Podium Game podcasts that are on there. It would be great if you could uh, leave a rating and review uh, on iTunes. It helps yes. people find that, the, uh, the, exactly. the shows. Yeah, and yeah, uh, more people listening, more people interacting on Twitter, more fun, more you know topic requests and stuff. It's perfect. Yeah, just do it. So we would, Come on. Uh, any uh, <laughs> right? Any feedback that we can get uh, on uh, what we're doing, uh, positive or negative, we uh, we definitely appreciate it. So uh, that's what makes the show better. Yeah, and if you have any topic ideas, I mean, and I mentioned that sort of haphazardly, but it, it's true. I mean, there's been numerous shows where someone said, hey, it'd be pretty cool if you guys talked about blah, blah, blah. And then we like do a little cursor research and we're like, yeah, that would be a great show if we talked about blah, blah, blah or whatever. So let us, you know, what's your blah, blah, blah? Yeah. <laughs> Send it. We'd like to know. Send us your blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, on to the show. All right, so now we are at uh, our number 15 choice for uh, NBA Finals Game 7s, and I think we might ruffle some feathers with our choice here, but it is the Knicks versus the Lakers in 1970, <gasps> the uh, the Knicks winning 113 to 99. This is most famously known as the Willis Reed game. <laughs> Except to Walt Frazier. Well, yeah, you know, I, he's probably okay. Walt with Frazier this, but, uh... was pretty good in this game too, as we'll talk about. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is, of course, I mean, it, obviously, it is a you know tremendous, courageous moment for you know Willis Reed, who had a torn muscle in his right thigh during Game Seven, sat out Game Six, where Walt Will Chamberlain went for forty-five and twenty-seven. Then, you know, um, gets a quarter zone shot, famously emerges from the Madison Square Garden tunnel before Game Seven. The the fans erupt, his teammates get a lift. The uh, the Lakers are left shocked and staring, and you know everyone knew at that moment that you know the Knicks were going to run away with this uh, game apparently. But you know they obviously, <laughs> um, you know uh, Reed is able to come out and play. I think twenty seven minutes. He scores the first two baskets for the uh, Knicks. Doesn't score again, but is able to you know um, use his muscle to keep um, Wilt from getting close to the basket for uh, to be able to uh, score much. He has a uh, Wilt kind of has a uh, a rough game here, um, and um, you know, and the, the Knicks are able to you know blow it 
blow ahead early and able to yeah. hold on to uh, to win the game. Yeah, that, that's absolutely. I mean, w- w- I kind of joke about it or whatever. And, you know, there, there's the idea and, the, and sort of the, the the narrative that, you know, he came out and they were just done. That the Lakers had no chance or whatever. And you look at the stats and it, to be fair, New York did come out and just absolutely. I mean, 28, uh, 38 to 24 in the first quarter and then 31 to 18 in the second. So it was really without a late rally by Los Angeles. They had 30, uh, 30 points to, you know, New York's 19 in the, in the fourth, really without that. I mean, it would have been a big blowout because they really, really jumped ahead early. And, and one of the big issues, and you mentioned Wilt's game. I mean, he was one of 11 from free throw. And that, that was sometimes the Wilt thing is where, you know, those free throws just would not go down sometimes for him. Yeah. And it's just, it, it's just, and obviously knowing him and, and reading all about him and knowing, you know, it mentally, there's a lot of, I mean, that guy was not, little things would kind of get at him and that would sort of in a lot of ways stop his focus or stop his concentration or something. And and it could have been a situation where Willis Reed came out and people assumed, okay, Will's going to take over now. Cause those are a lot of times when he wasn't, when, when people sort of assumed it, things were easy for him is when he sort of always tended to have some issues, but yeah, I mean the free throws I'm sure were, were not a good thing either. It just, it, it compounded in a lot of ways, right. but you would sort of assume that Wilt would just lick his chops at the fact that Willis Reed was out there, you know, hobbled or whatever. But it wasn't like that at all. It, he so. just wasn't able to take advantage of it for whatever reason. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he was 21 and 23 of the uh, game, 21 points, 23 rerounds. But oh, yeah, yeah. he was two for nine on when Reed was in the floor. And, you know, and, and it, like I said, it was never close. Uh, so um, so yeah, basically, you know, he was there, but but not really able to, um, you know, help his team win. So, um, you know, the Lakers were aging at this point. I mean, um, Elgin Baylor was 35. Will was 33. Jerry West was 31. Uh, Will was actually injured nine games in the season, but surprised everyone by returning for the playoffs. Um, uh, the uh, but nobody talks about that. No. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Nick, this is the Knicks' first championship team, of course. Um, Reed, Walt Frazier, Dave DeBusher, Dick Barnett, and Bill Bradley is kind of the core members. Uh, they won two titles and made a third finals in four years, uh, coached by Red Holzman, of course. Um, and then and Reed. Uh, this year was the MVP of the all-star game, the MVP of the season and the MVP of the finals. Now he was the first person to do that, but granted this was the second year there was an MVP for the finals. So it's not necessarily that great of a, you know, first. Have, have we ever, cause I know I was, I was trying to do it, but it's, it's a little tough with, with, you know, the box scores that we have. Do we know what, um, was he pretty deserving of that? Or was it a lot of, well, kind of yeah, I mean, I don't know that that's the first three games. I know he did really well. Yeah, I, mean, uh, I know game five. He struggled a little well, bit. But that's... He was injured in game five. So he didn't, exactly, he didn't play the yeah. whole game five. He didn't play game six. Um, I, I kind of have it a hard time believing that, like, you know, because he barely played five, he didn't play six and then barely, you know, two point. But yeah, whatever. It, I it's... mean, he was 23 and 10 for the series um, on, you know, 48 percent shooting. Um, you know, Frazier was, uh, 17, eight and 10 on 54% shooting. Um, okay. All and right. he played all seven games played, you know, 43 minutes a game. So, yeah, I mean, you know, just looking at it statistically, you know, obviously not having watched the games and, um, not having the advantage of dunning all that. I mean, I think Frazier probably would have been a stronger choice, but I understand obviously the sure. reason to have, choose Reed for it. It's fine. You know, it's not. And then, yeah, when you get into value, I mean, a lot of times when you look at at old, you know, uh, today we, we sort of treat MVP awards as like the best guy. And, and, and that's rightfully so. It's yeah. probably how it should. But a lot of times, and you, you get that with old time baseball as well, where, where value was determined a little bit different than we assume value isn't necessarily best. And in this case, there was probably some, you know, some narrative surrounding that final game. Or well, whatever, there was, him, clearly, you know, but rallying them up. And I'm sure the quotes of everybody saying, yeah, he was the reason we won. I mean, it, it, it's it's fine. It's 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 nitpicky. I, I mean, I was just kind of I don't know. I mean, they but... believe it. Yeah. I mean, I think he played well enough that, hey, I mean, sure, there's a reasonable case to be made, you know, even without, you know, um, that, you know, he's 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 right in that conversation. So it's, it's not like I feel like it's unfair for sure. No, no. Um, this was the Lakers' seventh finals loss in nine years, although at least it was to a new team. <laughs> so, um, and um, I, I thought there was some some interesting quotes from teammates um, regarding this from NBA.com. Uh, Frazier saying, "I saw the whole Laker team standing around staring at this man. When I saw that, when they stopped warming up, somebody told something told me we might have these guys." 
And uh, Bill Bradley in a New York Times article from 1990 um, said it was the best example of inspiration by an individual in a sporting event I've ever seen. When I saw Willis finally come out, I got so pumped up. I thought he's here. He's here. He's here. And I thought if he can fly, so can we. Um, and um, yeah, so I mean, like I said, we, it, they were up 79 to 54 in the second half when, uh, you know, when Willis Reed finally left the game for good. And, you know, even though it got up to 14, it was uh, practically. Well, and um, a description of from New York Daily News, which is actually the um, uh, talking about how he was basically immobile. His face was contorted in pain and often he did not rebound for jump for a rebound or go down the court. But he was there. Um he used his heart and his, and his huge body to keep Chamberlain from getting close to the basket for rebounds, dunks, tips, and easy layups. Um, and I don't, I don't know if I'd ever really, I've heard, of course, everyone else talk about Willis Reed, but I don't know if I've ever actually heard him talk about it that much, but um, there's a column from fairly recently. Um, I think it was actually a couple years ago um, when the Knicks were in the playoffs and Carmelo was hurt and somebody else was hurt. And I mean, Reed basically said like, you know, I wouldn't have done what I did like if it had if it hadn't been game seven in the finals and if I knew that like I wasn't going to make anything worse. So he was like right, saying right. that like, OK, yeah, th- you know, I, this is not an example for everybody to follow. It just happened to be in the situation where I wanted to be like and like he was talking about how everyone got excited. And everyone and people were saying everything's going to be all right. And he's like, yeah, and he, I thought, yeah, I'm here on one leg, you know. And talking about <laughs> right. what he did to hide the extent of the injury, moving in slow motion, jogging stiff legged, avoiding eye contact with Chamberlain of all things, which is you know just kind of like interesting. Like th- there's like a um, you know every- everyone's kind of saying, "Well, the Lakers were intimidated," but that kind of sounds like Willis was intimidated a little bit, you know? Yeah, right. Like please hide me. Don't, don't right. tell Wilt. I'm yeah. Really, like like yeah, it's 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 funny how it, it sort of turned. yeah. I, I was I, you kind of get surprised because you would sort of assume because this the story is taken on such a legend that the guy involved in it would be part of that legend. You know, we, we get that with a lot of sports. It's like a lot of reasons why these guys are because these guys just never shut up about it. Sometimes like it's and, and Willis couldn't be. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's a Sports Century video about him. There's a bunch of stuff, and yeah. every time they talk, I just kind of like, eh, I mean, it was it was what it was, yeah. and like, but his teammates are like, no, it was the best thing ever, and like, he's like, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, like, he's the least excited about, it, which is, is is pretty funny. Yeah, that, that is interesting, yeah. And then you know, um, and he was just so glad, like, he couldn't believe that he made that first shot. Like, he was just so glad it went in, and was just. Like, it's a terrible if you watch how he shoots like he doesn't jump and like it's a terrible ju- yeah. it just looks like a really broken shot yeah. like there's there's some sort of fate that put that thing in there because like he shoots on like the down of his jump it's like a really fundamentally awful shot and like his second one is like also as fundamentally bad and then he's like closely guarding and it goes in and i'm sure he was just like don't pass me the ball ever again like there's no way i'm gonna make two of these ever you know you know so it's it's funny but yeah that, that first shot is is and and, and there's no one's anywhere near him because he's so cl- he's so slow to get down court right that like nobody's within like 40 feet of him in that first shot. And then, yeah, he just puts it up and, and makes it, but there was some fate that, that put that ball in there, but who knows? So, <laughs> and uh, of course, you know, there, uh, Walt Frazier's uh, game seven for the ages, 36 points, 19 assists, seven rebounds and five steals. He was 12 of 17 from the field and 12 of 12 from the free throw line <laughs> and, and really helped uh, bewilder Jerry West. Uh, you know, there's, kind of a when early on when the the lakers were um trying to get in like um you know frazier you know got him with the steal right away and basically like just west like it was just like bang you know just really frustrated and really out of there and that was you know kind of a point in which the um knicks knew they had them debusher also had 18 and 17 in the game uh west did have 20 28 6 and 5 but um but you know didn't didn't get much from um Frazier or um Baylor in the game um, as we or will and Baylor in the game excuse me mm-hmm. and uh the Lakers would again battle in the 72 and 73 finals with each team winning once so this was a you know nice little rivalry in the yeah. early 70s um anything else about this game uh, no, I don't think I have anything more. Okay. Um, you know, one of our famous ones, probably the most famous one we're going to talk, and I'm sure the one that people are going to say, 15? Like, what could be better than this? They're like, no, and there's a few that are obviously, you know, yeah. obviously better. But, yeah, I, I could see a lot of people thinking this is, you know, top 10 worthy, top 5 worthy. And, and you know, you'll see the reason. Yeah. I, one of the big reasons why I think, and one of the big reasons I think later, you, you know, we talk about, it's a famous game, but it's not really necessarily a, a, a great you know, game seven, it's not particularly close at any point. There's not really outside of the Willis Reed coming out of the tunnel and making the first two shots. The rest is just kind of pedestrian for, for a lot of yeah, ways. I mean, so there, you'll see. You'll, yeah. you'll, you'll, you'll There's see. the Frazier <laughs> performance, but yeah, beyond that, like it's, yeah, sure. it, it's not necessarily an enthralling game. So, um, 
Yeah. So the uh, next uh, choice, uh, number 14, is the Minneapolis Lakers against the Syracuse Nationals. The Nationals eventually became the 76ers, for those who don't know. The uh, Lakers won this game 87 to 80. Um, this was the final uh, game of George, well, I get George Mikan's career. He did actually have a brief comeback a couple years later, but it, it, that did not go well. But this was basically the <laughs> end of his um, of that dynasty. They won five titles in six years in the NBA BAA plus added another championship in the NBL, which was the league that merged with the BAA to become the NBA. Um, and uh, the two of the best nationals players, Dolph Shays and Earl Lloyd were playing in this game with Cass. Um, and Shays was still able to have <laughs> um, eight, 18, 9, and 8. Um, Paul Seymour and George King were kind of their other uh, key players. In fact, all their key players are 26 and younger. They were a very uh, young team. And um, Seymour, Shays, and Al Servi, who was now the coach, had actually been on the 1950 team that lost in the uh, in the finals. We talked about Earl Lloyd in a previous podcast. He's the, the first African-American player to to actually play in the NBA it was not the first to have a mm -hmm. contract, but they were, you know, four who essentially started around the same time and was, uh, he, um, he and, um, and one of his teammates, I'm blanking right now on his yeah, teammate's name, but, um, we're bad people, but <laughs> we've done a lot see. of, I, yeah, I'm, uh, it was, it's going to be obvious when you say it, but Damn it, we're bad. All right, we, I, well, we'll, we're we'll edit that part out. So. <laughs> <laughs> so he was one of the uh, first two, uh, one of the first African American players to uh, win an NBA championship, and um, for the uh, Lakers, Mike and actually didn't play that well in this game. He only had eleven points on two of ten uh, shooting. Uh, Jim Pollard stepped up though with uh, twenty one uh, three and three and. 54 was year was a little bit odd. Uh, it was the last year before the shot clock. And it was also the year where uh, the NBA had a very strange round robin playoff <laughs> format for uh, one season that kind of, you know, uh, threw a bunch of uh, which kind of threw everybody off. But um, very weird way to do it. Yeah, yeah that's no, I'd be pretty interesting if they did it today, but <laughs> probably not very good. Mm hmm. No, yeah, that's it's, it's very uh, yeah, and it, there's been few little tweaks to the playoff format, but by and large, it's it's very similar now. I mean, there's there's different things with home and away or whatever, but what we sort of know as the playoffs, a lot of ways, really have been pretty standard for for quite a while. I mean, obviously, you had a few different teams here, seating might be a little different, but by and large, yeah, not not totally a wild you know sort of difference with playoff you know here and there. Because whereas you know the World Series, you know, went through a lot of changes in its first you know few years. You know, NBA Finals, we kind of settled pretty quickly into into a format that, that we're kind of used to today. But, yeah, Ron Robin, uh, probably not yeah. the best move. Yeah, but. so they, they, <laughs> they didn't stick with that one. It, Jim Tucker was the other uh, first uh, African American uh, player. Okay. To, okay. Uh, I was looking at the wrong year for the Nationals, which is why I didn't uh, see him on that uh, list. So, um, anyway, the um, – so I thought this was interesting from NBA.com. During his amateur professional career, Mikan had suffered two broken legs, broken bones in both feet, and fractures of his wrist, nose, thumb, and three fingers. Yep, and that's why he retired when he was 30. Yeah. <laughs> so. And um, in game two with, with seven seconds left, uh, Paul Seymour took a set shot from 43 feet out and swished it, giving the uh, Nats a 62-60 to 60 win. Uh, it was the first time the Lakers had lost a playoff game in the Minneapolis Auditorium, which is a streak that extended through seven seasons. Now, as we mentioned right. before, they didn't. sometimes they played in St. Paul instead of Minneapolis, but it's still a pretty good streak. Um, and... Um, Let's see. Uh, yeah, I, uh, Pollard scored nine of his points in the third period when Minneapolis pulled ahead 61 to 45. The Nats did work their way back into it in the fourth quarter, but they fell short 87 to um, to 80. So um, so it, I don't think it was quite ever that close, but it was still, you know, reasonably competitive game. And sure. um, this was kind of a... a little bit end of an era for the Lakers. Obviously they, they were okay for a couple years and then they kind of got really bad until they got Elgin Baylor and then ended up moving to Los Angeles. Of course, uh, the, uh, nationals won the 55 title and then were good. Okay. For the rest of the fifties with shades. And then eventually in the, in 62, I, I think would move to, um, or 63 would move to Philadelphia. So, um, 
but they had a you know a, a pretty good run there. But their their best days were you know Jays was obviously a superstar, one of the great players yeah. of the fifties, uh, and it you know it was they had a decent run. But of course they couldn't match up with the uh, Celtics once they got going. Yeah, absolutely. And 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 the Lakers, you know, really, really, as you said, got real bad real fast. Um, and a lot of ways with George Mikan as the coach in, in some of those years. But uh, yeah, before you know, obviously moving to L.A. and then sort of having a few rough patches, then finally getting it together and really not looking back for, for many, 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 many years. So I'm trying to look here. I'm, I'm looking at their, just to see how long it was that they took them to be, you know, not a very good. Yeah. Other than the, yeah. 74, 75 was a 30 win. Other than that, fifties, forties, sixties, it's, it's pretty remarkable run up until, you know, we get to the late, you know, the, the late two thousands Kobe era. So yeah, absolutely. Jerks. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> Um, so our number 13 choice is the Rochester Royals against the New York Knicks in 51. Uh, this is an, an odd series because the Royals actually won the first three games. Then the Knicks won the next three and the Royals were able to win uh, game seven of them. So it's, it's only one, the first of three times a team has taken a three Oh series lead and then end up the other team ended up forcing a game seven. This is the closest margin of those three, only four points. It was 79, 75, the Royals winning the game. So, um, the the Royals, of course, are now the Sacramento Kings, and they have the longest uh, NBA title <laughs> drought and also the longest NBA Finals appearance drought in history. So, damn you, Robert Ory. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, and it, this apparently was a somewhat important series for raising pro basketball's uh, profile. This was kind of it didn't necessarily move it any to the front pages, but it was two New York teams. It was the first seven game finals in league history. The NBA really only existed. This was only the NBA's second season once the league merged. So, yeah. um, you know, everything was kind of getting its way to sort out, but it was sort of, um, you know, the, the Royals had, um, you know, Bob Davies, who was kind of a, a real big ball handling star at the time. Uh, I was, I guess the first, the player who invented the behind the back pass, or at least was credited with that. Um, and he had 23 and three in this game. Um, Arnie Risen, who was, you know, kind of their big man had 24 yeah. and 13, uh, Bobby Wanzer, another, it was kind of their third, their third star at 13 and 11. Um, and the Rose actually had feature Knicks coach Red Holzman is the, on their team as well. So there you go. Um, and they were coached by Les Harrison who led Rochester to six, 600 plus seasons in a row. So they were, uh, yeah, they were a uh, early dynasty of the, uh, yeah. the NBA. And I think I, uh, when we were doing our, um, our, our blog post, which is something that we've always wanted to do a little bit more. I, I looked at this team and it's a pretty fascinating team in a lot of ways. I mean, really a dominant early, you know, you know, we might not remember that. I mean, it's, it's obviously like you said, NBA and if it is in its infancy, but a pretty dominant team in the early, we just sort of assume cause it's the Rochester Royals. And I don't think that ever comes to top of mind of people, but yeah, a, a really good team for a lot of years. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, and they they kind of ran into the Lakers a lot, obviously. And, mm-hmm. You know, they, they, yeah. this was the only year they were really able to get through on the Lakers, and honestly, it was because George Mike had a serious injury, and um, you know, and 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 was injured during the series. But, um, uh, but yeah, they still obviously had quite a bit of success. Um, the Knicks, meanwhile, had uh, Vince uh, Borla, uh, who had sixteen and seven. Harry Gallatin had twelve and ten. Other notable players were Nat Clifton. Uh, Max Zoslowski and Dick McGuire, and they were coached by uh, Joe Lapchick. So um, this game was um, the Royals took a big early lead, but the Knicks were able to cut it short 74 72 with less than two minutes left to go. Uh, Ryzen drew Connie Simmons' sixth foul for the uh, Royals. The Knicks only had a Harry Gallatin left in the uh, front court. Um, Ryzen then scored on a hook and a free throw to give Rochester a 75 74 lead. Uh, Borila tied it with a free throw, and from there, the momentum shifted. Uh, Davies drew, drove and drew a blocking foul on Dick McGuire. Uh, the Knicks argued that it should have been a charging call. Davies made both his free throws for a 77-75 lead, and the rule at the time was the teams, in the final two minutes, the teams would have a jump ball after foul shots uh, during that time. <laughs> right, so cause... Rochester controlled the jump. Momentum. Yeah, holes been <laughs> ran out. The... Killing any any sort of form of momentum. Yes. That could ever, or any excitement that could possibly be derived from basketball, yes. but yeah, and, and that would go away <laughs> once the uh, shot clock uh, came into yes, thankfully. Into fruition. But, <laughs> so um, Rochester controlled the jump, and then Holzman ran out the clock until Jack Coleman scored at the end for the seventy-nine to seventy-five uh, final score. So, and this was the first of three straight finals losses for the Knicks. They were, you know, a, a good team for early fifties, yeah. but by the late fifties, they would fall off quite a bit. 
All right, so a uh, quick little quiz time here. Right. Uh, how well do you know your Rochester Royals history? Ooh, um, hopefully. Basically so, the franchise. Where, where, so after Rochester, where did they go? Oh, uh, Cincinnati. Cincinnati Royals. After that? Uh, they went to Kansas City and Omaha. There it is. All right. And then after that? And then just Kansas City. Yes. And then, and then Sacramento. There you go. Okay, so you know it quite well. I, I know it reasonably well, yes. <laughs> there you go. That's, that's always a funny team. I love the Kansas City Omaha Yes, thing that lasted for that. That's I, it that was always like two it's or still three years, this day. Right? Yeah, yeah, it was like three years, and it always like I'll read it in books, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's yeah. like really, you know, and and we think of it, it's just so weird. I mean, it's it's just hard to believe that. They, and you know, it's not that long ago that we saw it in you know the current NBA, you know, the the New Orleans Oklahoma City Hornets. Yeah, for for you know, I mean, obviously uh, extenuated circumstances there, but sure, yeah, but it, it, it's pretty funny. I wonder, uh, I, I you're never gonna see it ever again, but it, it, it's kind of fun. I think it's a pretty cool way to sort of. You know, I, I think honestly it wouldn't be the worst thing. I don't know if an NBA team is really, you know, nec- you know, really needs it, but there's some baseball teams that could probably, hey, you know, we spent half the year in Portland and the other half in, you know, Charlotte. You know, it's it's really bizarre. <laughs> it's far, just like, but, yes. yeah, no, it's just like really bizarre. But like, you know, I I, I like that idea of, of kind of two cities that like, hey, we can't really handle a full franchise. We can take half of it. Like, yeah, like I I just find that fascinating. But yeah, I don't I don't uh, don't think we're gonna see that anymore. Yeah, that, it'd, be you know. it'd be interesting for the fans, but I don't. I my guess is that the players would probably hate just that. that yeah, would, oh that yeah. Would, I'm sure they really, yeah, really right. bad thing to um, have happen. Yeah, Kansas. Yeah, mid 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 seventies NBA players really didn't have a whole lot of clout to say like, you know what, we're not really happy with this. We should change this rule. And yeah, they yeah they uh, not a whole really healthy league at that point. So they were probably like, oh, oh you're gonna pay us? Okay, right. yeah, that that's cool. fine. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll go wherever. Kansas City, uh, we love Kansas City. That's fine. But yeah, I think uh, today it'd be a little tough to get that through the uh, the, the players union. But we'll see. Yeah, we'll see if it, we'll, Chris Paul will probably mention it at the. Uh, at the next uh, CBA meeting, so it's possible. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> uh, yeah, Kansas City and Omar are three hours apart, which um, is kind of a long. I I, I wasn't sure how close they were, but that's a decent mm-hmm. to, uh, between those cities. Yeah, that uh, yeah that would that would be rough. I think uh, as a player, you know, already having to do travel, you know. So, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And and the one team that could do it is Sacramento. Now they're they're building their new uh, their new arena, so oh, we're okay. Yeah. New publicly new new public funded arena, so we're good. Yeah. We're everybody's yeah. everybody's happy yeah. <laughs> except, except for the Sacramento know, the, taxpayers. Right, except for the taxpayers yes. who, in ten years, ago, wait, what? <laughs> well, I'm sure that they, yeah, I'm sure they don't have anything else to spend money on. <laughs> right. All right, well, that's it for uh, this show. What a somber way to yeah. end. It. <laughs> we got to figure out a better way. Sorry, to Sacramento. Uh, stupid publicly um, funded arenas. Uh, yeah, anyway, so Demarcus Cousins is solid. Yeah, he's so good. That, he's good. I'm, so if I'm, you can re- if you can resign him, that'll be great. Yeah. Oh, he's got a few years before that. You yeah. Know, right. That, so. All right, uh, so we will be back with uh, with part three of our look back at uh, final game sevens in the finals uh, coming to you soon. <laughs>